Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the episode two of Keeping It Real with Riverbend Pentecostals. I'm Cody. And I'm Terrence. I'm glad to have you be yeah. doing this again. Today we're going to talk about uh, seasons. Uh, everybody goes through them. We went through them. Sometimes we still go through them. Uh, we're just going to give you a rundown on why we go through a season. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's read up on some stuff. I'll watch some messages. So we're just going to go through and see what, you know, tell y'all what, how we, how we went through them, how we dealt with them. And uh, I'm going to let my brother take it over from right now. Okay, so <clears throat> season, everybody knows the famous story of the season of the children of Israel and they were delivered from Egypt uh, when God used Moses to do so. And then they didn't get into the promised land because of their lack of obedience to, to follow God, to trust in God. God split the Red Sea for them to get away from Egypt, the Egyptians and just done all these work, all these signs and miracles that he'd done. And then they didn't trust him enough to go into the land that he promised them. Right. And they had to stay into the wilderness until that generation that had that disobedience was gone. And then a new generation would rise up led by Caleb or Joshua? Caleb. Caleb. And would uh, prosper the land. And they had to go in that season. They lived in the wilderness. And that was my first introduction to the whole idea of a season. I had these funks that I was going through. And Brother GL got to talking to us in our small group uh, about seasons. And seasons has been a big thing that I'd like to study on and, and talk about. So I went to Ecclesiastes. Uh, verses 1 through 11 in the New Living Translation. And it says, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather, I'm sorry, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do people really get for all their hard work? I have seen the burden God has placed on us all, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Sometimes, God places God's timing. I know for me, personally, if I have to get Go into my own thing. Uh, I've learned from the Pentecost- River Bend Pentecostals recovery class that it's important to do a self inventory. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's painful, but it's God's timing for us to to get inside of ourselves. We hit a funk and we're just slacking on our prayer life, or we're we just can't seem to get into the spirit, and we feel lost. We feel like we're not even being Christians right at this point. We're, and I want to get to. I want to say this too. We have a, a problem with blaming everything that we're going through on the enemy. Sometimes it's not the enemy. Sometimes we give the enemy an easy day at work. It does because you know, like I listened to a Jack Cunningham message just been a long time ago, but he was like, sometimes the devil don't even have to work. All he has to do is sit back and listen to you talk. Mm-hmm. So you think about everything that's coming out of your mouth. Everything, all the gossips and, that you do, or that I do, or, or we do, you know. All the flesh. All the fleshly things. And really, you know, if you think about it, we have two enemies. We have ourselves. We, we have ourselves and, 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 the, the, and the enemy. And the enemy is his self. But you know, the enemy can only feed off what we give him. Mm-hmm. So if we give him all, if, if, if we stay with so much negativity, negativity in our life and so much controversy and we're so focused on only the world and not focused on God and where God's trying to take us to, the enemy has a heyday with it 
because when we're really trying to seek after God, when we're really trying to get over here in God's, on God's terms and everything, and the devil knows what to work with us on because he's already sat there and listened to us talk so much. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I know what it catches eye. Let me go ahead and do this. And that's when God steps in and says, okay, so we need to break you down here. We need to rise stuff up to the surface. Put all the filth. He wants to put all that filth and grime up here at the top. And like our pastor says, he wants you to skim it all. And sometimes that's painful. It because is. Because there's stuff that could be in you. Enviness. Uh, Self-righteousness. Disobedient. Uh, just all kinds of stuff. But that's a part of who you are. And yep. you haven't known it until it's come to the surface. And it's almost like you're killing yourself. It is. It's like all this stuff that's been a part of you your whole life the way you've operated, the way you've thought. And then when you come into this life, living for God, all of that has to be retrained. I didn't grow up in church. I had to retrain my whole mind process, the right. way I thought, the way I viewed things, the way I... I had to change everything. And sometimes, Virgil may get on to me for this one, but you know, he says that this life is simpler than we make it to be. And we make it harder than what it is. And that's true, but this life is also hard. Because we've well, you got them ways about you. you. You know, I'm about to be 35 this year. So I've only been in church for four years, but I've only had the Holy Ghost for a little over a year. So you say, say let's, let's say 33 years I lived how I wanted to live. Even when I first started coming to church, I still lived how I wanted to live. I still did the things that I wanted to do. Somebody made me mad, hey, I was quick to snap out on them, you know, because that was what I had in me for so long. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after I received the Holy Ghost and really, really tried to give everything to God, I still have stuff rising up in me. I still have stuff that I'm trying to rip out of me and take out of me because God's like, that stuff that's in you, I can't have it in my kingdom. I can't let you... Go out here and do everything that I need you to do with all that stuff in you because it's like my pastor talks about, Brother GL talks about tension. It's like a rubber band. And you got stress at home, and you got stress at work, and you got all this stuff bottled up inside of you, and that tension breaks. For me, I have the guy showing me right now that I have to let Terrence die out. When that tension breaks, I gotta say, okay, Lord, this, I need you to step in here and do this. Mm -hmm. I need you to step in here and shut my mouth for me and let you work through me. It's time for me to die out because when that tension breaks, I like to be like, okay, looky here, dude, I'm, you know, I wanna snap out, I wanna, you know, it's, it's sad to say it, but I want to cut somebody out or, you know, but that's not who I'm trying to be. I can't, if if we're doing that and we're going back and maybe it's the same person you snapped out on, how are they going to take it when, hey man, let me talk to you about God a little bit, bro. Uh, and there's constant times in the Bible, in the Old Testament, where God has put children of Israel, which uh, backslid about 16 times, according right. to studying and stuff, and um, he's put them all through seasons, time and time again. But a season, it lasts for a time. Yep. It can be two days, it can be two years, it can be 20 years, it can be two months, it can be any amount of time, whatever it takes to get you to where you need to be. If we have all this stuff, all this nastiness in us, because we have to be holy on the inside. And if we're not holy on the inside, then we're not living right. We're right. not right. We need to be right with God because the trumpet could call any day. And I want to be right with God in every day, every second of the day. So there's a time when God's going to put us in a, in a season and there's no amount of prayer that we can throw up that's mm -hmm. going to get us out of it. There's no amount of murmuring or complaining or crying about it that's going to right. get us out of it. We have to look into ourselves and say, okay, God. What do I need to get rid of? What, what are you trying to show me? And then when you see it, you work on it, you're fixed. You think maybe God's put you in that season. Not to punish you, 
to discipline you. Discipline's good. We need it. But when you get disciplined by God, He needed that to be out of you so that you could move up and become more. And He can mold you and shape you into being more because He has a plan for you. Right. He has something He wants you to do. He has a purpose for your life. Every day that you wake up and you have breath in your lungs, you mm -hmm. have a purpose. And He has to get that nastiness out of you and put some more virtue, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, and experience. Because experience is lessons learned, and lessons learned leads to triumph in right. everyday battles. And look, look at the children of Israel. They went into the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years. God fed them with manna. He fed them with quail. They never, they never ran out of anything they needed. Their clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. But you know the only thing that wore out was the bad ways about them. The ways that was keeping them from the promised land. It wasn't that, they, that he didn't want to take them to the promised land right then. But he knew they wasn't ready. there was people among them that had to die out before they went into the promised land. Because if they went in, they wouldn't have been able to possess it like he wanted them to. And thank the Lord for Joshua, Joshua and Caleb. Because they was the only two out of all of them that said, Hey, I want, I want what you promised me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm about to walk through this. I'm, I'm going to go through here. And I'm going to get what you promised me. Yep. It's just it was that people promise. like them that he was wanting everybody else to be like, Hey, you see what's in these guys? This is what I need in you. All this murmuring, all this complaining, all this idolatry that you're trying to you know, put in your life. I need all that out of you. You know, because as we look at things in our lives, we can look at things in our lives as idols. Sure, and, sure. you know, money, um, TV, anything that, I, I feel like anything that we put over God could be an idol. Yeah. You, you could almost accept that as an idol. It's like exalting itself higher than the name of the Lord. Right. Because if you're, if you're, okay, let's say this. <clears throat> if you're spending more time on your phone and Facebook, and what you were spending in the Word, I feel like that's an idol. Now, don't even, don't don't get me wrong. I have them, I have them problems myself mm -hmm. because I put stuff over my reading or my stuff over my praying. You know, <laughs> we're we're all human. I'm human. My brother here, he's human. We fall short just like Every day. all of y'all fall short. We're no better than y'all. And we're no better than anybody else. We're on the same level as you. I don't want to stay on the phone talking about Joe Blow getting arrested at Piggly Wiggly. I right. want to I wanna be praying. I'll be getting some time along with God and talk to him about what's going on with my soul, what's going on with salvation. Right. I... Or praying <laughs> for somebody that needs it. Mm. You know, you, you run in contact with, every, with somebody every day that needs prayer. Yep. So much to it, pray it's, about. It's so, if, we're not, if we're not sensitive to the Spirit, if we're not in tune with God, if we're not on his level, it's like my, my pastor, Brother GL, he preached a message on living on the above. Mm -hmm. If we're not living up here, we, we, we're, never, we're never in God's will because we're always down here. God's never going to drop himself and come down here where we're at to be on the same level as us. He's never going to stop being God. He's never going to stop loving you. He's, not, he's never going to stop caring about you. But he's never going to defile himself to come down here on your level. Right. You're going to have to die out to the, your ways and go up there to Him. You know, I just, I got chill bumps sitting here talking. Oftentimes, I'm guilty of it. I'm sure everybody else is guilty of it unless you're just too holy. But we say in prayer, <laughs> We say in prayer, if you, God, I, if there's anything in me that's not right, I'll, uh, I want it out of me. But you don't realize what you're saying until that stuff comes oh. up. When that stuff comes up, like I said earlier, man, you're just, you're dealing with it, and it's part of you. Mm -hmm. But then it's like you're looking at it like it's, like, God, why are you doing this to me? You pray right. for it. You, you ask for, for it. it and it's a blessing because all you're going to do every season is meant to get you closer. It's meant to put more in you that's going to take you further. I, anytime that you're in a struggle and then the enemy will start throwing the whole kitchen sink at you, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. starts throwing all this stuff at you because he knows you're in the season. Right. He's looking at it as you're on a plateau. You're going to tip either his way or God's way. And really, we got to give thanks to that sometimes because any time the devil comes at us, I've, in my experience, I've come out of it stronger, and I've come right. out of it with stronger faith, and I've, and I've gotten closer to God out of every, every struggle. And every time the enemy comes at me, I come out stronger, and I come mm -hmm. out closer, and I come out with more to take with me in my further on in my journey with my right. walk with God. I've only been in this September will be two years. I'm a baby in Christ, but God has changed my life, and He's brought me too far to Come let a back. season. Yeah. If I've handled all the stuff that I've handled in my life until this point, and I can handle God molding me and shaping me into what He wants me to be, seasons are a good thing because good at things. the end of the day, no matter how hurtful it is, no matter how painful it is, some good stuff's gonna come out of it. Your it is blessings, healings, understandings. I want. I'll, I'll say this: blessings. I mean, not blessings, but seasons. It will change your prayer life. For sure. Because that's the time where you need to get closer to God in prayer. That's where you need to say, Lord, I can't do this without you. I see this stuff that you are trying to get out of me. Mm -hmm. You know, God's not just going to say, okay, I'm going to take this, this, and this, and this out of you. You don't have to do no work. But you know... God puts all that stuff up to the surface for you to take out, for me to take out. There's stuff in me right now that God's showing me that I need to take out of. But it's up to me to get it out. But you know, there's verses in the Bible that we can go to when we're, when we're going through heck. You know, when, like you said, when the devil's throwing the kitchen sink at us, you know, there, there are scriptures we can go to to help our mind, to help us. It's like Philippians 4 and 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens me. A lot of people will take that verse and look at it, look at it different because my son Blake, he was talking to me about it. You know, some people look at that, at that verse like, Christ is with me, so I'm going to be this great baseball player. Because he's with me. Because he's going to strengthen me to be this great baseball player, this great whatever. But are you with him? But in, really, in, in reality, that scripture means I'm with you in that season. I'm going to strengthen you in that season. I'm going to strengthen you to get you out of that season, to get you over that hump that you're going through. My strength, it's going to give my, me, Christ Jesus. Jesus is going to give you the strength to pull all that filth and all that grime and all that unworthiness feeling that you have in you that tells you you're no good or what have you. He's going to give. He is your strength through them storms, through them seasons. And you know, I'll say this. If the devil is coming against you and you're in church and you're trying to live for God, that's a blessing upon itself because that means he don't already have you. It means you've got your hands and your feet and stuff that you're supposed to have it where you're supposed to be at. He's trying to pull you back away from it. He's trying to pull you farther away from God because he knows that four, Philippians 4 and 13 lives in you, mm -hmm. lives in me because God never gives us nothing. He never gives us a promise that he won't keep. Right. So if he says, hey, through me, I'm going to give you the strength to overcome that. I'm going to be with you because I died for you. I'm going to be there for you. My strength is going to live in you. So I'm going to pull you out of that season. I'm going to pull you out of your filth and grime. Mm -hmm. But I need you to work with me. I need you to work with me. On the same on the same level to get this stuff out of you, yep. because I got stuff I'm wanting to pour into you that is way way greater than what we're trying to hold on to. Um, I've been reading in Ezekiel, and 
Brother Giles gave us a Bible study on Ezekiel 37 about coming in order. And we can get to that another, another time. But right. I was reading this last night. And we take the word and we try to apply it to our life. So forgive me for reading so much, but it's the word. You probably need to hear it. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 2 says, The Spirit said to me, and it's New Living Translation, the Spirit said to me, Son of man, these are the men who are planning evil and giving wicked counsel in this city. And they, they say to the people, is it, not, it, is it not a good time to build houses? The city is like an iron pot. We are safe inside it, like meat in a pot. Therefore, Son of man, prophesy against them loudly and clearly. This, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and he told me to say, this is what the Lord says to the people of Israel. I know what you are saying, for I know every thought that comes into your minds. You have murdered many in this city and filled its streets with the dead. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. This city is an, is an iron pot, but the pieces of meat are the victims of your injustice. As for you, I will soon drag you from this pot. I will bring on you the sword of war you so greatly fear, says the Sovereign Lord. I will drive you out of Jerusalem and hand you over to foreigners who will carry out my judgments against you. You will be slaughtered all the way to the borders of Israel. I will execute judgment on you, and you will know that I am the Lord. This city will not be an iron pot for you, and you will not be like meat safe inside it. I will judge you even to the borders of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord, for you have refused to obey my decrees and regulations. Instead, you have copied the standards of the nations around you. Now, while I was prophesying, Pelatiah, son of Benaiah, suddenly died. Then I fell face down on the ground and cried out, O oh, sovereign Lord, are you going to kill everyone in Israel? So... How can I apply that to my season right now? Well, maybe the people that were worshiping idols and going against God's regulations and decrees and the way of life that He's commanded them to live for Him to be their God. Let's put that to our life. I'm in church praising God Sunday, but maybe I got some stuff inside of me that's wrong on the inside. God looks at the inward man, not the outward appearance. Maybe I'm self-righteous. Maybe I'm never wrong. Maybe I lie. Maybe I, maybe I cheat. Maybe I got so much going on in the inside it's not right. And God puts me in a place where I'm just, I'm hurting. I'm in a season. I can't seem to get out of this funk. I just want to feel God's presence again. I don't feel anything. I can't get past this hurt that He's, why is he putting me here? I don't understand. There's no amount of prayer I can say that's going to get me out of this. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing that's going on. I can't seem to get out of this funk. And all you're doing is complaining. You're oh, murmuring. Yep. Why, why, why? You're asking why in the wrong sense of asking the wrong word why. Why is this happening? You're asking it in the wrong sense. Why is this happening to me? Why? Why not is this it? Why not? Why is this happening to me? What am I doing wrong? So... God spoke everything into existence besides human beings. He molded us with his hands. But everything else that exists on this earth, every living being, is created by his word. It came to life. So when I read this, and the leader of Israel dies as he's prophesying this message that God gave him, it shows me he also speaks death. If he wants, you, if he wants it, he speaks judgment. And the man dies. And he hits his knees and says, Lord, you're going to kill everyone in Israel. So, I took that as I'm in a season. I'm hurting. I can't find any hope. And I'm searching for what I can do to get out of it. And then the man dying is equivalent to a light bulb going off inside of me. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to clean this up. Right. I'm not holy inside. Right. There's some stuff in me. Right. And I hit, the, hit my knees on the ground. And I'm saying, Lord, do I got to kill all of this? Do I got to kill myself? 
to get right. But the, uh, to me, maybe it don't make sense to anybody else, but to me that just blew my mind. Like we, that can relate so much. We, when that light bulb finally goes off, right? Like this is what this is. This is it. Okay. So then we go to verse fourteen. Then this message came to me from the Lord. So we already got. I've been doing this. I I realized it. I hit my knees. Lord, is this what I got to do? Is this what's going to happen? Is this how it's going to be? Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, the people still left in Jerusalem are talking about you and your relatives and all the people of Israel who are in exile. They are saying those people are far away from the Lord. So now he has given their land to us. Therefore, tell the exiles, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Although I have scattered you in the countries of the world, I will be a sanctuary to you during your time in exile. I, the sovereign Lord, will gather you back from the nations where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel once again. When the people return to their homeland, they will remove their trace of their vile images and detestable idols, and I will give them singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. I will take away their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart. So now is the promise. When I hit my knees and I realize what I'm doing wrong, right. I ask forgiveness. God, I see. I, I'm getting it. I, I, I know what you want me to do. I'm ready to do it. Right. I've done it my way. I'm going to do it your way now. And God says, now I'll take you back. Right. Now you're out by this season. Now it's time for you to grow. And then something else that just hit me is it says that about the relatives. Son of man, the people left in Jerusalem are talking about you. Well, maybe there's someone in your family. Maybe there's someone you used to be friends with in your old life or Maybe just in your whole life, you're friends with them, but they don't believe what you believe. And then they see you go through a season. You're going through this funk. I've come to realize that people are watching them. People that I love, people that I care about, my family, my friends. Right. They're all watching. And they're watching me to see how I react in right. this season. Because just like Brother G.L. preached about the Elizabeth Promise, there's a promise that they that God has for them. It's the same promise He has for me. Right. If I see that promise, and they walk in this church and they see that promise on me, they can believe it's for them. Right. So I have these relatives watching me. I have these friends watching me. I have people I love watching me. If I go through a season and I give up, for one, why would I give up? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is for me. Right. The God who split the Red Sea. It's for me. Right. He's doing this to discipline me. I'd be a fool to give up in that season. Right. But if I do, what am I what am I exemplifying to my family, to my friends, my loved ones, the people in my life that are lost and I care about? Them? What am I showing them? When really it could be that when I come out of this season and I'm raising my hands and I'm saying, Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. I'm stronger now. You this is thank you, Lord. I'm praising them. And then they see that, they're gonna be like there's something to this. You know, and I'll say this, like you said, when I'm coming out, you know, they're going to see you praising and worship even when you're with, in it. Mm -hmm. So that means when they're going through their stuff, they're going to be like, and he praised, he still praised, he still worshiped, he, he still danced and shouted, going through everything he went through. He still did all that. So when they're going through their stuff, they're going to be like, hey, he went through a lot, and he still praised, and he still worshiped God, and he still thanked God. He still did all this. So now I know when I go through it, I can still do the same. Mm -hmm. It's not, I wasn't trying to cut you off, brother, no, no, but no. I feel like it's not just when we're coming out of it that we should praise and worship God. And, and I'm saying this to myself because I went through seasons, and I sat over where I sat, and I really didn't want to praise. And I really didn't want to worship. And I really didn't want to thank God because I was just going through a bunch of stuff. But I think that's the time when we should be praising and worshiping. The hardest is when we're going through something. When we're going through them trials. When we're going through them that fighting that hell and fighting everything against the enemy. That's when we should be praising and worshiping the most. 
because it should be, it's a learning experience for us. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's the time that God said, man, I'm about to mold you into something more greater than what this world could ever throw at you. You know, that's the time when we should be like, Lord, I give you my all right now. I know I'm going through this trial. I know I'm going through this season. But you're still the God of my life. You're still the one that I want sitting on my throne of my life. You're still the one that I want to say, hey, don't do that. That's not who you are right now. I'm trying to get you away from that. That praising and that worshiping, we should do that even when we're in our darkest time of our life. We still have to praise and worship Him. We need to understand that we we're children of God and we're not soft. We are we're really warriors. We are. We're warriors on earth that are heaven from heaven. Mm -hmm. When we had the Holy Ghost and we're walking in the Spirit, we're acting in the Spirit, we have to have a faith of a warrior, a fighter. Right. So when we go into that valley, our great troops in our country that go into these valleys with the enemy, they go with a bold boldness. They're going to fight. They're going to, to fight for our country. We have to have that same mentality when we go into the a trial, a tribulation, a season. We have to be ready. We have to have a strong faith that my God is going to get me through this. The same God that's gotten King David through everything he faced. The same God that's that's moved in my life so far. Why would he bring you this far? To leave you there. He may leave you there for a amount of time to get you get in you what you need in you. Or to get out of you what you need out of you. But in the end, it's only for you to prosper. God is for you. And we have to understand that when we're in our season. It's easy to... to it's, sometimes it's going to be hard to feel yeah, like you yeah. praise and worship when you're in that season. It's, it's going to be hard, but you have to keep that faith. Faith is everything. Faith is a vessel for a miracle. And you have to keep that in mind when you're in the season. And God's just going to work. He's going to see you through it. As you keep the faith, you keep believing. Sometimes we, we base our belief on a feeling. And you don't have to feel the presence of God, the goosebumps and all that. But you, have, you always have to believe in it. God, I don't, I don't feel you, but I trust you. I don't, I don't, I don't feel your presence, but I, I believe in you. I know you're here with me. I don't understand why you're left. I feel like you left me. Maybe if you just feel like he's left you. Maybe you feel like he's not responding to you in your prayers. But maybe he's just working. He's off doing some work or something that's going to bring you blessings and bring you something good later on. So maybe that's not why you feel like he's not answering your prayers. He's off doing a work. It's going to bring you joy. It's going to give you rejoice. It's going to put more faith in you. It's going to bring you up closer to the above and in the above. Yeah. And he's going to work in you. Sometimes, whenever he doesn't respond to our prayers, like we feel he needs to, right. he could be working. He's And sometimes we're impatient. We you want are. things. If I want to be a preacher, I want to be a preacher in now. But it could be 10 years before it ever happens. But when it happens, it's going to happen in perfect timing. Right. And it's going to be perfect because God doesn't mess up on timing. When we're going through a season, it's because that is the perfect time for us right. to go through that season. Because there's something coming up on the horizon mm -hmm. that's going to lead us to triumph. And we're going to use that experience from that failure, from that season, for what we did wrong. We're going to take that and we're going to turn it to, we're going to look at it as a failure. But then it's going to turn into experience and a lesson learned. And we're going to triumph over it as we walk, walk on through future battles in this world. Right. We're going to battle every day. But we want to get to a point where as soon as we get up out of bed and our feet hit the ground, the devil says, oh, no. Right now, he's throwing everything at us. Not just us, but people in our church, people in the world. He's, right. The devil's throwing everything at us because he knows what we're capable of being when God gets involved. There's people flooding in our church that come from recovery that come from the streets of addiction, afflictions, all these problems they had, and they're flooding our church right now, which praise God for it. Right. But God, that's making the devil scared. He's saying, oh, no, I had my grip on these people. I had my grip on Terrence. I had my grip on Cody. I had my grip on Brother Ronnie. And now they're, oh, man, they're in the church. They're I'm scared. Big, I'm scared. Because he, and he's throwing everything at us right now because he right. sees the potential that, that God has for us. He has, God has something for us that's better than we could ever imagine. 
God owes us nothing, but He's given us everything. Absolutely. And oh man, I'm getting excited. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> you know, you was talking about having His hold on me and you and Brother Ronnie. You know, Brother Shannon. I mean, mm-hmm. man, I look at Brother Shannon, man. And, you know, he went through so much. Mm-hmm. Man, look at what he's doing now, man. He's leading the recovery. You know, I mean, I know it's all God, but the way he's letting God work in his life, man, it's, it's, man, it's great, man. You know, it, but you look at what he had to die out in. Yeah. When he was in that time of season, man, he had to die out to a whole lot of stuff that was all bottled up inside of him to get to him. Now look at him. He died out to all them things. Now he's leading a recovery. You know, he's he, he brought so many, him and, you know, even Bernard, you know, they both had to die out to a lot of stuff, man, to get to get them. You know, God let them die out to all them things to get them on track to get this recovery started. Yep. You know, he's seen, well, when I get them died out to all this stuff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring them into something more greater. And look at it now, man, you know, he's in, he's got his hands in the recovery. You know, so much has happened in the recovery, man. I mean, uh, and the way God's working in it, you know, them times, that's what I'm saying, man, them, them seasons is a blessing. Chapter, they are. Revel- they are a blessing. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, and they had defeated him, being the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. God has already beat the enemy. He's defeated. But he's just trying to take as many souls down with him as he can. Right. But when God, whenever we go through a season, God means it for good. The devil's going to try to take it and take us to hell with it. He's going to try to latch on to us while we're already low and take us down. But he's already defeated. Mm-hmm. And I'm a child of God. There's royal blood running through my veins because I right. come from the God. And... Our testimonies. It says our testimony. The enemy is defeated. By the blood of God. Died on the cross. For Calvary. And our testimony. So any time. That the enemy comes on me. Or a struggle. Or a season comes on me. And I come out of it. Stronger than I was. Any time the enemy comes. Maybe I don't even have to be in a season. Maybe I went through a season. I came out of it. I got what I needed to get out of it. And now I'm growing, and I'm maturing in the spirit, right. and I'm going down the path God wants me to go on. Maybe I'm not even in a struggle, but the enemy just comes on me. I have the authority under the, Lord, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to say, get away from me. You get out of here. I don't, you're defeated right. by my testimony because you took me here. You threw this on me. You told me I was never going to be anything. You told me that my mama didn't love me. You told me that my daddy didn't love me. Right. You told me I wasn't loved by anybody in this world, that I'd be alone forever, that I'd be lost, that I'd be in the darkness. Mm-hmm. But look where I am. I'm in a church, people fool that I love, that I hope love me. My right. dad loves me. My father loves me. Right. And I'm, that's testimony right. is defeating you. Mm-hmm. So kick on, devil. You get know? on out of here. Like, <sighs> I love the word, man. Yeah, I love it. I'm thankful for seasons. Man, and it's, it's a good thing to go through, man, because it, it molds us into something greater. Mm-hmm. It's and a blessing, just, man. We're just blessed to be doing this. Isn't right. It? And we're thankful for y'all, man, watching us. Yeah. We had man, 248, you know, yeah. 49 views. Almost 250 views just on our testimony. So thank hey, you. We hope we get <laughs> 10,000 views on this. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it shows us that God's, that hands, on God's it. hands on it. You know, and you know, if we only get 50 views on this one, then so be it. We still going to throw them out there for you. Hey, we had 90 views in 30 minutes. Right. Hey, if you're, if you're watching it, share it, man. Yeah, give give it to somebody, man. This could be. We're trying to do some good work here. Somebody's life. We're hoping it gets bigger. We have people asking in the church to get involved. Mm -hmm. We don't have nothing for anybody right now. Right. But. We hope it's going to grow, and uh, we got we got big plans of God willing. Uh, right. But we got to take the time to grow. Uh, this is helping us too. Right. Uh, it's giving us time to say, "Hey, we got we, we got to sit down, and get ready for this." Yeah. You know. Get some time we, in. We got to get some time in with God. We got to pray. We, you know, we come here an hour early. And we pray. 
you know, that, that way we know God is flowing through us. You get any bit of, any, you know? any bit of carnality out of us. Oh, yeah. Be led by the Spirit to say what needs to be said. Uh, and we love y'all. Appreciate and we, you. And we thank y'all for tuning in and, and, and listening to us because it really shows us that y'all care and it shows us that, you know, hey, you know, this is part of our ministry. Yeah, this is part of uh, what we got to do. Yep. Uh, I know Brother Jill said we got to keep it to 15 minutes, but hey, <laughs> we, we try, brother. <laughs> we really are trying. It's just hard. It I is. Mean, but uh, we love y'all. Appreciate and, you. And uh, my brother here, we he going to close us out in prayer. And that's going to be a that's going to be a every episode thing. We're going we're going to pray out every time. So when we're praying out, pray 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 with us. Yeah. Pray with us. If you don't know how to pray, man, just just if you don't say know how to what's pray, in your heart. If you don't know how to pray, uh, observe yourself while talking to your friend, and then go in the closet and talk to God the same way. Right. <laughs> and uh, reach out to us, man. We can. Yeah, we got Facebook. Our pastor has a lot of prayer guides. Yeah. Prayer is number one thing that we got to have in our life. That's how we're going to overcome the enemy and overcome this world. And you just get Prayer. closer to God. You build that yeah. one-on-one relationship. Yep. It's not about anything else. No. There's a there's what they call an apostles' corner over here in this church. I, I, I'm I'm not in it because I sit second row. Shame on me. But <laughs> yeah. you get that one-on-one relationship with God. Right. And it's just it's you and Him. It's nobody it's else. It's nobody else. You don't need anybody else. You, it's just you and him. So right. it's a full-on father-son, father-daughter relationship. Mm-hmm. That's all it is, man. And you realize that it's it's more than what you someone might think of it. Never being in it, you know. Right. They, they think of look at God, some Lord up there with a swivel ready to judge us and hammer us mm-hmm. when we mess up. But it's but not. Really, he's he's right. our father. He's our creator. He, mm-hmm. He only wants us the best for us. And he's, and he's got so much love for us, so much mercy. That we can't I mean, even comprehend. And sometimes. we're going to get into all that again yep. in another episode. But, but uh, Yeah, thank y'all. Let's pray out, bro. You want to pray that out? Yep. It's done. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for everybody that's going to watch. We pray, Lord, that everybody has something they can take from this, God, and take it home with them and apply it to their life, Lord, that don't soon leave their heart, God. And I pray, Lord, that you bless everybody, God, that's going to watch this, Lord. That blessings come in their life, Lord, that your hand be over them, God, that you lead them, Lord. That there's something they can take out of this, God, and be able to use it in their life, Lord, to get a blessing out of it, God. God, I thank you for this podcast. I thank you for this church. I thank you for the people that are watching, Lord. And I just pray for your hand be over us, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you.